We can show you the pictures, but it's difficult to capture the feel of a shuttle launch. Our studio here, three miles from the pad, shook like it was in an earthquake. Hundreds of thousands of people came from all over the country to feel that too. And Kelly Cobiea was out there among them. Chris Bell has America dreamed of this moment since he was a kid. Oh, look at that, guys. I've been promising myself for 20 years that I wanted to see a launch and uh, this is, I kind of ran out of opportunities. So this, this was our last chance. Umbrella stays shut. Let's Bell drove 1,100 miles from Detroit to Titusville well, with his mother-in-law and three children and spent the night in a tent in the pouring rain to make sure his family had front row seats to history. I, I know how much enjoyment, how much excitement I got just, just seeing launches on television and, and, and going to space camp and being a part growing up of that. And I know this is something that, that at least the two boys are going to, they're going to remember. Along Florida's Space Coast, people staked out any open patch of grass they could find. Many came two days ago and slept when and where they could. All for just the incredible 42 seconds between liftoff and the shuttle's disappearance in the clouds. It's one of the most amazing things I have ever seen in my entire life, and I'm, I'm so emotional. It was fabulous. The rumble of rockets has drawn crowds to this coast for 50 years for Mercury and Apollo, the shuttle's first flight, lift and today off, for its last. It was also a spectacle that left the Bell Boys believing the sky was no longer the limit. Did you know I'm going to be the first king on the moon? And millions more here and beyond marveling at the journey. It was hard for people to leave this park today. They stayed until they could no longer hear or see the shuttle. And then, Scott, they gave Atlantis one last standing ovation. Thanks, Kelly.